Hello everybody, my name is Fabio Terezinho and I'll be conducting the tutorial about custom widgets for Indosoft Web Studio. The agenda has just two topics. First, a quick overview about the architecture, the benefits of the custom widgets, and then a real demonstration on how to design, uh, link the custom widgets to your application, and visualize the custom widgets on the local viewer and even on thin clients like the SMA thin clients. With that, starting with the overview and discussing the main, main benefits and architecture of custom widgets. Uh, this feature has been introduced in the Software Studio version 8.0 plus Service Pack 1. And the whole idea is to increase even more the openness and flexibility of the solution and allows you and users, partners, vendors uh, to create their own controls, encapsulate those controls with properties and, and events, and make those controls available uh, in a way that is very simple to add them to Indosoft Web Studio projects and interact with different Indosoft Web Studio projects. It's similar to the concept of ActiveX controls and .NET controls, with the difference that custom widgets are platform agnostic. In other words, you can encapsulate web controls that would run on any platform, not only Windows, but also iOS on iPhones, iPads, uh, Google Android devices, tablets and smartphones, uh, virtually any uh, platform supported by Indosoft Web Studio and the SMA Thin Client Studio Mobile Access Thin Client Solutions from Indosoft Web Studio, which is based on the standard HTML5. So the benefits, again, in a nutshell, is to allow our customers, partners, and vendors to build an ecosystem with controls and uh, widgets that can be shared and reused by each other, just like the native objects from Indosoft Web Studio. The design and architecture is actually divided in two phases. The first one is to actually create, implement the custom widget. The second phase is once the custom widget is created and added to the library, then in the phase two, you just consume this custom widget. You add to the screen just like an ActiveX control or just like a native control from Indosoft Web Studio and just interact with it. Link tags to properties, link scripts to uh, events. Uh, and once the phase one is completed once, uh, then in phase two, the application engineer do not have to worry about how the control was created. In phase one, it is required some skills in HTML and JavaScript to actually implement the control and bind the properties and events to the actual implementation of the control. But in phase two, it's not required any programming skills whatsoever. You just consume the custom widgets from the library as many times as you want throughout the project and reuse this control even in different projects if you want to. So in phase one, first you design the control using the IDE from Indosoft Web Studio, and then you added two files, an HTML file, which is the actual page that will display the contents of the control, and a JS file, a JavaScript file, where you actually bind the functionalities, uh, the, the events, the properties of the control, with the properties and events exposed uh, to Indosoft Web Studio through the custom widget. With that, I will start the demonstration. This is the standard development environment from Indosoft Web Studio version 8.0 plus Service Pack 1. And in this particular example, I will create a custom widget that provides the functionality of a web browser. So custom widgets could be uh, using any web functionality, could display images from cameras, could play videos, could uh, render 3D images, uh, could show charts like pie charts, bar charts, uh, in this particular example, I create something simple just to demonstrate the concept and I create a custom widget which is pretty much a web browser that receives a URL from the application from a string tag and display the page from that URL and also trigger an event uh, whenever the page is fully loaded so uh, I know uh, that the URL has been loaded in the web browser and then I can do something else. So to get started from the scratch, I'll create a brand new project called Custom Widget Tutorial. Very well. <coughs> you 
in a few seconds I'll have the project available here. So under screens I can insert a new screen and build my graphical interface. So I have a button here with the label exit. So when I click on this button I can call the shutdown function to shut down the actual runtime. I can create here a text box to type the URL. So if I go to properties, I can create a tag called URL, which is a string tag with scope local. So I can type different URLs on different thin clients. And here I'll have a rectangle that will show the number of times that the page was loaded. So I create a tag called page loaded counter. and create as an integer tag also with local scope. Very well, now it's time to add my custom widgets, but I don't have any custom widgets in the library yet, so it's time to create the actual custom widgets. <coughs> can come here to new, give a name to the custom widget, like my web browser, and here I can add properties and events to my custom widget. So I'll create a property called URL, and I'll add an event called page loaded. And at this point, I don't worry about the implementation of the properties and events. I just define them and say OK. Now my web browser is available here in the library. I can click here and add to the screen. Or even if I delete it and I click again on the custom widgets uh, icon from the ribbon, my web browser is available there. I can click on it and add to the screen just like any other object supported by Indusoft Web Studio. You can resize it, make it wider, make it bigger here, increase the height as well so you can see more and more of the web page. Good enough for now. And now if I double click on the control, I see the name of the, this instance, My Web Browser 1. And when I go to members, I can link tags to the properties. So I'll link my tag URL to the property URL. And here in events, I will write a script that will be executed whenever the event page loaded is called. So my script will be page loaded counter equals page loaded counter plus one. So every time that this event is called by the control, I want to increment the tag page loaded counter. It's pretty much done. You can save this screen as the main screen. If I want to make it the startup screen, I can right click on the main screen and set as a startup. And since I want to make it available to the SMA thin clients as well, you can come here to mobile access and customize global settings, like for instance the process value, change the update rate to 100 milliseconds, is the rate to exchange data when tags change values between the server and the thin clients. And finally, I can save my screen as HTML. So I created the control, I defined the properties and events, I even linked tags and scripts to those events in one instance of the control. Now I need to create the implementation of the actual custom widget. So to do that, I need to edit two files on the applications directory. So I use this function get app path, which returns the actual path where this project is stored. It's here under in the Soft Web Studio projects custom widget tutorial. And for any project, you are going to have the folder web. Under web, you have the subfolder widgets. And under widgets, you already have a subfolder with the name of the custom widget that you created. So I'm going to go there to my web browser. And those are the two files that you need to edit uh, to modify, to implement the actual functionality of the custom widget. So I will start with the index.html. You can use any text editor. I'm going to use an editor here with IntelliSense to make it a little bit faster to type and configure it. So we provide already a template that you can fill in the blanks. Since this control is very simple, I will just create an iframe. And in this iframe, I will set the ID 
as my frame. That's quite important to remember this ID because that's the reference I will use in the JavaScript file to access uh, this particular tag in the HTML page. So I set the ID in this case to my frame and I will also change the style to have the width 100 and the height as 100. So it takes the full area available on the custom widget control. So very well, that's all I have to do on the HTML page. Can go now to the custom widget.js, the JavaScript file where I actually uh, link the properties and events from the control with the objects, with the tags uh, in my HTML page. In this case, uh, an iframe with the uh, ID my frame. So just like in the HTML page, you have a template predefined here, so it makes it easier for you just to fill in the blank. So here in property name, you just type the name of the properties that you created for your control. If you have more than one, you can keep adding additional rows here and customizing each row with the different name from your properties. And pretty much what this line does is every time the value of this property changes on, on the application, this function callback is called in the name of the property and the value of the property that changes is passed in this info structure uh, that can be used within the function to find out what's the name of the property and the value of the property to trigger whatever needs to be triggered. We also have this fire event predefined here and in the event name you can just replace it by the name of the event that you created like page loaded. So every time that uh, this event is called here, it actually calls the event page loaded on the control, on the custom widgets added to the application. So here in the function callback, every time that the URL changes, I pretty much want, want to do two things. I want to set the value of the property URL to the source member of the iframe in the HTML page. And I want to, uh, as soon as the iframe calls its method page loaded, I want to call the page loaded event from my control, indicating to the Indosoft application that the page was fully loaded. So to do that, here in the callback function, I'm going to create a variable called myframe. And I'm going to link it with the ID my frame from the HTML page. Very well. Then I can link the event now. I can make my frame when the HTML, when the my frame tag from the HTML page call its event on load. I will also call here the fire event that calls the page loaded event for my custom widget control. And finally, I want to set the source for my uh, frame in the HTML page with the info.value, which is actually the value of the property URL that calls the callback function. That's pretty much it. It requires some programming skills, but it's not complicated uh, for someone that has some knowledge about JavaScript and HTML. Everything else, the communication between the thin clients and the tags and everything else is uh, done behind the scenes automatically for you. Now, there is one last step before we run the application. The way how Windows Soft App Studio loads the HTML page and the JavaScript files that we just customized is through a web server, is through HTTP or HTTPS. So in my case, I'm using IIS as the web server. So I can come here to the IWS 8.0 folder, right click, and, and this uh, website is created automatically when you install in the Soft App Studio with mobile access. So I can right click on this folder and add a virtual directory with the na name custom widget. 
and it must be the name of the, the virtual directory. And the physical path for this uh, virtual directory must be the directory, the root directory of your actual application. In this case, the custom widget tutorial. I will connect with a user that has access to that folder. So I'll use my user here. Very well, can test the connection, succeeded. So I have a virtual directory called custom widget on the IWS 8.0 website from my uh, web server. So now I can run the application on the local viewer. I see my interface here and I can set this URL for example to www schneiderelectric.com as soon as I hit enter I change the value of the URL tag which changes the property URL from the control and according to the configuration on the JS file and HTML page loads this URL on the web browser and you see the actual web page there on the screen as you see here the page loaded was incremented uh, in as soon as the web page was loaded. So I'm also receiving the event from the control. Since this feature is supported across all the graphical interfaces from Windows Soft Web Studio, including Studio Mobile Access Thin Clients based on HTML5, I can come here to my server and say I want to open the main screen. And I will open this screen on the SMA Thin Client, in this case using Google, uh, Google Chrome, but could be any browser that supports HTML5. And I can type here www.indosoft.com, for example. Say OK. And the Indosoft web page is loaded uh, on the SMA Thin Client, and the page loaded tag was incremented here on the browser. So my custom widget is working and allows me to type a URL in an Indusoft tag and load the page from that URL on the control. Obviously in a real application, instead of typing the URL, you can programmatically set the URL by script or when the user clicks a button instead of typing it. Uh, but in the tutorial, uh, uh, I wanted to show the main functionality on how to exchange set properties from the application to the custom widgets and receive events from the custom widgets uh, back to the application and manipulate it in some way. So with that, uh, we finished the demonstration and I would like to thank each one of you for your time and uh, hopefully the information here is useful for you and your projects. Thank you all and have a great day or great evening whenever you are.